Rio for Linda Slap Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Over 30 years, Linda Slack and Lisa have built teams both within the corporate world and in what she likes to call her the corporate world. Linda specializes in warehouse management and safety. In the passionate world, she used these strengths as a guide in Himalayas and today as the owner of Tahoe Long Day, providing training, hiking, and networking for safe, happy, and healthy pets. Linda believes creating real change takes a team. In the Himalayas, this meant bettering the quality of lives by installing toilets, showers, water tanks, and warehouses in the Annapurna and the Everest regions. Locally, she leads the team Bark for Life fundraising in honor of the canine caregivers and pets lost to cancer. Linda is happiest when she is lacing up her hiking boots. She considers her boots an extension of herself, strong, sturdy, and willing to climb tall mountains. If she's not training on the importance of pet wellness, we'll find her hiking with dogs as a service to those with time constraints. Linda lives in Tahoe Vista with her, with her wife Ramona Cruz and Shiloh, their border color. Thank you. Nice. Okay, so today I want to just tell you a little bit about myself, uh, why I do what I do uh, now, and uh, then I want to do a demonstration for you. Uh, that's a dog. Oops. Yeah, that's kitty out. I think that's five dollars to the presenter. Five, yeah. yes. <laughs> so uh, the reason I do this, uh, I'm going to send a picture around. Uh, it's not a great copy, but it'll give you an idea of how I started this this job. So. Um, we lost our, our dog. Uh, she was uh, 15 years old, and she she was having some issues. So for about 90 days, uh, the last 90 days of her life, uh, as a senior pet, she was really having a lot of trouble. So her hips were going, and we were you know at that point where we had to decide was it time to do the humane thing, because actually the best gift that you can give your dog is the gift of saying goodbye when it's time. Mm. Because it's not good for them and it's really truly not good for you as an owner. So we had kind of made a decision in our mind that we were going to say goodbye this one particular week. Well, we went out, uh, Steely and I went out one day. Um, and you know, it's like any other day, she laid on the back deck in the sunshine. She, she went out to the trees where she always went. And it had just snowed six inches and there was no snow under the trees so she could easily hang out. And I decided I was going to take pictures that day. So at one point in the picture you're looking at, at she looked back at me as if to say, see you on the other side. Oh, yeah. And it was just like, oh, okay. I get, I get the answer. You know, I, I know what I need to do. It's done. So um, although we had decided when we were going to make that happen, she had other plans. So that night she collapsed at about 10.30 mm -hmm. at night. And of course there was no emergency vet open at that time here. Our, our closest one here is in Tahoe, uh, it's uh, Donner Trekkie. But it's only open on the weekends. So we had to drive to Reno. So we took, took her, got her in the car, got her there, and of course she looked at me one more time just like this, and I thought, oh, this is not going to be easy. But we said goodbye, and coming back to Tahoe that night, we watched a falling star that I swear went from one side of the lake all the way to the other side, and we just thought, ah, stealing. Yes. You know, it was just like, okay, we did the right thing. We knew we did it, but it was still tough. So, with Steely gone, uh, I had been the caregiver 24/7, and all of a sudden I found myself with nothing. You know, no dog, nothing, and I thought, okay, now what do we do? So for two months, I tried to reinvent myself. I, I thought about going back to Nepal, but I really didn't want to be that far from home anymore. Um, I thought about doing guided hikes around the lake. But then I thought about dogs, and I mean, I thought about dogs constantly because I just lost one that I really cared for. And so I thought, okay, what about pet sitting, dog walking, you know, whatever, but dog related. So I looked in the paper and I found an ad for a grooming shop that needed a dog washer. And I thought, okay, I can do that. <laughs> so, so I went in, and of course, you know, I've got all these dogs coming through the tub, and, and each one, you know, sometimes I just kind of looked at them and smiled, and, and sometimes I talked gently to them. But what I found uh, so interesting is how many dogs were unhealthy. Mm. They had arthritis, they had oh. diabetes, uh, they had seizures, um, oh. obesity. I mean, dogs that look like light bulbs. I mean, it was just really hard for me to watch this. So I just decided 
okay, there's got to be more than just washing dogs. I got to do something about this. So I took my passion for safety and my passion for animals, and I thought, okay, let me see what I can do. So I looked online. I found a course that was for um, pet tech, which teaches CPR and first aid for pets. And, I, and it's, their motto is basically improving pets' lives one owner at a time. Well, I knew how to do CPR and first aid and wilderness first responder for people, but why not take the extra step and learn how to do it for pets? So I went and, uh, to one of the classes, became an instructor, and that's what led me to hopefully saving pets in our area one pet owner at a time. Because really it isn't about the pet, it's about educating the owners on how to deal with their pet. And in this, this whole scheme of things, my passion really became senior pets because they are the ones that need us the most. Uh, a lot of times people will say, oh, I can't deal with it, and that's <clears throat> it. But the quality of your pet as a senior can be really good as long as you know what to do. So what we're going to do this morning, uh, that's how I started. So that's I am a pet tech instructor. Uh, the two classes I like teaching the most are knowing your pet's health, and the other is senior pet care. I also teach CPR and first aid and a pet saver class. Typically the eight hour class that I teach, the pet saver class, is for people that are actually caring for pets, you know, in pet services. But anybody can take the class if you want to know more about how to deal with your dog. They're great classes. So um, today what we're going to do is called a snout to tail assessment. And mm -hmm. there's two, two assessments that you do on a dog. You do a wellness assessment and you do an injury assessment. Okay. With the wellness assessment, it's a perfect way to bond with your dog. And what you're trying to find out when you do a wellness assessment is what is your dog's normal? So that when your dog exhibits not normal, you know something's wrong and you can take action. You can go to the vet or do whatever it is you need to do for the dog. So a snout to tail is exactly what it means. You start at the snout and you end at the tail. So when I'm doing a snout to tail assessment, the best thing that you can do is do this for your dog a few times a week. And you start right at the snout, and the first thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at the nose and I'm trying to decide if it's dry or cracked, if it's wet and it's oozing, then those are things that are not normal. Uh, you know, your dog's going to have, uh, during winter time it might run a little bit. You know, you notice their, their temperature on their noses and stuff changes. Sometimes it's dry, sometimes it's wet. But it's when it's really cracked or it's oozing that you have an issue and you want to get it checked. So I start the snout, I'm checking that out. As I go from the snout, I'm also going to go under and look. I'm going to pull up the side of their, their gum line. Um, I'm going to see if their, their gums are pink. And you can actually press your finger on it, just like you would do on your fingernail. And you want to make sure that the capillary refill, it refills within two seconds. That means it's normal. If you have a chow, you're going to have a darker uh, colored mouth. It'll be harder to see. But you can use toenails. You can use whatever just as long as you can push it and see it come back. So when I'm looking in their mouth, I'm checking for the capillary refill. I'm checking their teeth. You want to make sure there's nothing chipped or damaged. Um, you want to check around the gum line, make sure that it's not inflamed. Uh, all of these things can be an issue for a pet if you, if you let it go unnoticed. So, Where are you pushing when you're doing that? Like right at the thing? Yeah, so it, and you can't really see on this dog, but you, you pull it up pull up the gum line, uh -huh. and then you just push against their, you know, just like on your mouth. Like you right push. above the teeth or higher? Yeah, right here, just like right on your gum. Okay. You just put your, your thumb on their, on their gum line right here. Push it, and then let it refill. Near the bang, back, doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Just, just anywhere where you can actually see it refill. If it doesn't refill, then obviously the dog's got something going on. It could be anemic, could have all kinds of things, but the normal is two seconds. Cool. So, once I go from the mouth, I'm checking the muzzle. You're always looking for lumps, bumps, anything that's not normal. Mm. Um, as I go up, I'm looking at the eyes. When I look at the eyes, I want to make sure that both look the same as far as uh, you want to see the motion. So when I go like this, the dog should actually follow my hand. Just like a person, you're looking for the same thing. If one eye looks different than the other, you want to get it checked. Mm. Um, as I move up the head, again, I'm looking at lumps, bumps, anything that's, that's not normal. Uh, when you get to the ears, you actually want to go and, and check each ear. You want to smell the ear and make sure that there's nothing going on. You can easily smell ear mites. 
Uh, typically, if it's in one, an infection in one ear, it'll also have it in the other. What do they smell like, ear mice? It's more like a um, kind of a musty smell, okay. uh, which pleasant. you'll notice. It's not, yeah, it's not pleasant. So you'll notice it, and it'll be not normal to you. So, but if you're paying attention to the dog, you can actually notice that. Fair enough. So after I've done the, the scalp or the, the oh, scalp, my dog, I'll show you. I'll come back down. I want to check their neck, also their chest. So I'm coming down, and all I'm really looking for is just lumps and bumps all the way down. And then I'm coming down the spine, same thing. If the dog has an injury in the spine, what's it going to do? It's going to shrug. Wince. So, yeah, so you want to you wanna just make sure. So you check it all the way down, along with the hips. And the other thing about doing one of these, it's a good time, like I said, to bond with the dog. <coughs> the dog is actually getting a massage, so it's not going to mind. Uh, it's good to do this once a day, uh, or, well, once a day is, is great if you can do it. But, but do it at the same time daily. Mm -hmm. So don't do it when your dog's all ramped up. Wait till the dog's been out on a walk, and then actually come home. Let the dog relax. You can lay down right next to it, and then just do what you need. Mm -hmm. And if the dog is laying down, just roll it to the other side when you're ready to do the other side, or have it sit. So once the back is done, then I come down, and I want to check the legs. So in the legs, I'm actually just looking for uh, making sure the motion's OK. Same thing with their, their feet. For their pads and their toenails, I just want to make sure there's no real cuts. Toenails shouldn't be chipped. You want to make sure that uh, there isn't anything, any debris between their, their toes. Um, I just took care of a little terrier who got sap stuck between her toes, so she couldn't walk. So if that happens, um, peanut butter. Rub peanut butter in it. It'll actually uh, remove the sap, and then the dog will like the peanut butter. So uh, <laughs> that's a good thing to do. So it's easy on it. So I do that with each leg. I want to go down. I want to make change, check the motion on all the legs, all the feet, check the pads, like I said. And then when you're ready, um, you want to actually turn the dog over. So of course, in this, this instance, this doesn't look very good for this dog. <laughs> so there's a number. So when you're, you're, you check the stomach, and you're the same thing. You know, you want to just make sure there's no discharge anywhere. Um, and you want to make sure when you're, you're pressing on their stomach, it's not real hard, but hard enough that if there's something going on, they'll, they'll wince again. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you want to check for. Um, also, when you're checking a dog, uh, when you've got them rolled over, it's a good time to check their, their breathing. Typically, a dog will, it's uh, 15 to 20 breaths per, per minute. It's real slow if they're calm. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to see it, you know, in, in the thought is chest rise and fall. You can put your hand there and you'll see your, your hand will go up and down. Um, if you want to check their, their pulse, the best way to check it is to go right right here, their artery right, right here up by the, the end of their leg. You can check that and a, size, a dog this size should be about 80 to 100 beats per minute. And you just do 15 seconds and then time to pick one. So once you've done all of that, then you come to the back end of the dog. You don't want to, you want to make sure there's no debris under the tails. Um, you know, just check and see if, if the tail is also an issue. You actually, dogs can break their tail. I had a lab that uh, broke her tail, and if you've seen a lab that doesn't have a wagging tail, it's pretty sad. Yeah. So anyway, check their tails, and then that's basically it. You just want to do the same thing and do it the same way, and you do it with intent to find anything that's not normal. So I'm not sure what my time is, but um, that's the snout to tail assessment. Do you guys have any questions? My dog always rips its paws. She's always down at the beach, and I mean, I have called the vet, and he's like, just super glue it, and I've heard all sorts of things. How do I prevent it? It's awful. I mean, she'll literally be bleeding up from the beach. Oh, I was going to get yeah. that to mine, um, too, especially in the snow. Yeah. My yeah. dogs, every time they it's walk in the snow, snow their feet bleed. It's painful. Both of them. So a lot of people will use those little booties, which the dogs yeah. do not like. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's musher really stuff, hard. does that stuff work, the musher? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just now trying a new product uh, that will keep the pads pretty, you know, soft and Moist. not cracked. So I, I don't know yet. Uh, that is just, a, especially with snow, it's such an issue because they slide along the ice. Have you tried hoof flex? Do you know anything about that? That's what I, I was haven't told. I have tried that one. No. It's kind of messy, so it's I don't yeah. use it as much as I should. Yeah. It's for horses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, how do the like the uh, huskies, the Iditarod huskies? How do they keep them pliable so they're not? I think ultimately that, that when a dog grows up in a certain climate, I mean their their feet. Well, they're acclimated used to, it. to it. You know, like, okay. Um, I don't have any issues with my dog. 
um, with anything in, the, in winter time or not. But a lot of dogs who are not used to being here mm -hmm. will come up, and the first thing they'll do, they'll their pads will start bleeding. Um, I thought because so, mine have been, I mean, I'm a backcountry yeah. snowboarder guy. Mine have been hiking since they were yeah. barely able, and they're every time, yeah. especially the female. And you've got I mean, retrievers. golden retrievers. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, she'll be bleeding within the first couple of minutes every single time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that's and, and unless you can get something on their feet, and that's the big thing is... They they won't keep them on. You use booties, have a video camera around. <laughs> oh, they, 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 they won't keep they them on. No, they have no dignity thing. with this. Yeah. 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 Like, right. They just prance. Oh, it's just all. Yeah. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm trying something new to see if it works for some dogs. Um, and if it does, I'll let you guys know because it's, it's, uh, it is a problem for a lot of people. And I'll try to be more faithful with the hook flex and give you more information. I just don't like it because it's sloppy. I mean, yeah. it's like since a guitar. So then when yeah. they come in, they're knocking it all over oh, the sure. carpet and. Ooh. So I don't like oh, it. Oh, it's all yeah. blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's that's one of the toughest things for mm -hmm. for a pet because there's no way to really keep them isolated. Mm -hmm. I have one more question about mm -hmm. the teeth. I, I I've had my dog now is my ninth foster dog since I've been here eight years, mm -hmm. and I, they all come with just horrible teeth, just yeah. horrible, and I I'm so skeptical when they put them under. Um, to you know, to do the teeth cleaning, and it's like six hundred dollars. It's very expensive. It's, it's crazy. Not, it's, it's all I pay for everything. Is there mm. any way? I mean, I used to use Dr. Cherry. He would do it, you know, and help. But now he doesn't like to do that. We have one vet um, in Truckee who will do it without putting them under. It's Wendy Robinson. Um, and she's holistic. Oh, good. Holistic. Yeah. Thank which, you. Which which vet is she with? She, or is she herself? She is herself. Okay. Yeah, she is. Um, Right on Donner Pass Road, pretty close to the freeway. Um, okay. Kind of, I think. Past the high school. Lots. Yeah, right down in that area. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to get some of her cards too. So, yeah. the other thing you can do is you actually can brush your dog's teeth. Although my border collie still is not happy about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does not want his teeth brushed. So the other thing I was going to mention when we do an assessment, you got to go at your dog's pace, not at your pace. So right. it took me quite a while for the dog to get used to me playing with his feet. Yeah. So you just have to do it slowly. To, so, um, but brushing their teeth, if you can start that, they also have the little finger brushes. Yeah. And, you know, put put anything on it. You can even put peanut butter at first, just so they get used to the feeling. At some point, um, they'll get used to it just being massaged to their teeth, and then then you can actually brush their teeth. Uh, older dogs, when they do have issues, you just have to you have to deal with what you you've been dealt with, especially as a foster. Um, but I would I would recommend Wendy. Great, thank so, you. And I'll find out about the feet because that's just a, it's not a good thing. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yes. I just I just wanted to tell you, Linda, that um, you know I had called you about yeah. my son, and um, he lived here many years, and his love of his life was his golden retriever. <laughs> Best woman in his life, anyway, <laughs> in my opinion. But anyway, I <laughs> met some of his ladies. Yeah. But anyway, you have your taste in dogs. We got the Duchess, <laughs> and they, about a year ago, they moved to Oklahoma, and that's where he's living, that's where he's working. But he called me and said, I'm going to bring her back here to, you know, this is where yeah. she grew up. And he did. He brought okay. her back. He had her remains, and I don't know what beach he went Aww. to. But he let her her, oh, her go in the lake, and good. it was it was moving. And then, but he brought his new little gal with him. And she's a sweetheart, and he had gotten her right before he made the decision yeah. to you know yeah. let Duchess go. And for him, it worked. You yeah. know, Duchess mm -hmm. wasn't too happy about it, but yeah. it helped him. Good. Yeah, and it was did very he use sweet. Uh, critter care? No, I told him about critter care, and he he just decided to have her put down in Oklahoma. Okay, and, and then drove okay, her good. drove her back okay. to mm -hmm. Tahoe, just yeah. a three day trip. Yeah, but he handled it. And okay, he was okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Do Do I have time for a a, a little funny story? Sure. Anybody? Is yes. it going to make me cry again? Well, no. It's, it's, <laughs> maybe. This makeup so, has to last today. <laughs> so I, I had this black Labrador that I got when I was about seven. And, of course, you know, a chubby little kid from Maine, what's he going to call a black Labrador bear? Um, so bear lasted a very long time, 18, 19 years. Oh. And uh, so he got cancer, and I put him to sleep. And I had his ashes. 
and my ex-wife and I had had a house fire. So his ash can was charred black and cracked, and I'd wrap duct tape and electrical tape all around it. So my wife and I, about six years ago, she's from South Africa, we decided to move there for a year or two. So bear his ashes, it's in my suitcase, oh. right? We go, we check our luggage in, we're in the lounge, the international lounge, waiting, and over the loudspeaker, Sandra Donovan, please come to baggage check. <laughs> and they've got Bear up on the screen, yeah. right? And they're going, what is this? Right? We're flying international. So she had to explain to them the whole story that it was my childhood dog. Oh. <laughs> but they let him go. They didn't damage him. And he's back on the mantle here in Incline. Oh, he's been all over the world with me, actually. Yeah. Dubai, you know, wow. Scandinavia. Wow. He's a great, great dead <laughs> traveling friend. <laughs> Okay. Why did the bumps raise a concern? You said bumps. checking for bumps. Oh, well, my one of mine has a. I just figured it's a wart or something. Yeah, warts. Uh, warts aren't so much. I mean, you can always get them checked. You know, your next vet visit. What you're really looking for is like swelling. Okay. Um, so sometimes, as dogs age, you'll, they'll have like fatty tumors. Mm -hmm. um, nothing to be worried about. But once you find it, it's always good to get it checked. And. Um, you know, it's just like I wasn't concerned. Know. I pointed it out to the vet, but she didn't yeah, seem to so, care. Yeah, sometimes if they feel it, that but when you are with the vet, you can say, okay, these are the things that I've noticed. Okay. So, with um, fatty tumors, though, mm -hmm. they're pretty common. So in general, if you notice one and it doesn't cause the dog discomfort, right. it's usually okay. But if it causes discomfort, you need to take them. To exactly. The vet. That's that's the rule of thumb with those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you your vet will probably just tell you that's what it is. Um, but I've seen people who have let the tumor grow so big that mm. it's it's just not it's comfortable good. for the dog. So right. Okay. You don't want that to happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, real quick, speaking of fatty tumors, my dog a golden retriever, covered with them. A couple times they burst. At one time I had operation on her, four hundred dollars. The next time I took her in, when one kind of popped. $500, I said, okay, I'm done. Clean it up, I'll do whatever. I started giving her turmeric, a spice. Wow. Yeah. It has oh, wow. shrunk them. I mean, it's like an amazing cure. I started researching, like, I've got to find it. I can't keep spending $400. It works. I got a jar, giant jar on Amazon. Yeah, it works. I mean, it's... That's good for human joints. Yeah, it is, actually. Turmeric root. So you mean if I take it, I'll get skinnier? Well... Is that what you're saying? It's anti-inflammatory. For fat people? No, anti-inflammatory. He's got injury, and when he runs, he limps bad because he's got a messed up shoulder. Would it be good for that? It, yeah, yeah. anti it's up. amazing. You don't What's it called? Turmeric. T U R. I'll send you the link. I got it on Amazon. It's in the, the yeah. orange yeah. spice in curry. The yeah. thing that makes curry yeah. yellow yeah. is turmeric. And do you just take it with a, really a, a teaspoon? Is yeah, it I just give her a little bit on her food and she go yeah. gobbles it right up. You get it the, in pill form? You're about the fourth person yeah. in like two weeks yeah. that has done really? it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send everybody the link. It's yeah, a giant shot. Awesome. It's good for you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a curry. Right? It's good for um, people. I've too. also heard that if you put uh, food on your teeth, yeah. when it rinses it off. Any other questions? Oh my goodness, I'll try it. I'm going to try it. Is it expensive? No, I found it on Amazon. I did just for 12 bucks. One at a time, everyone. <laughs> We're losing the room. Sorry. And when do we get a gavel? That's awesome. I just have one thing to share. I shared it with Linda as soon as she came in today. So as long as we're talking about dogs, what's the heck? Uh, this is regarding Dexter, our TBX, official TBX mascot. He had to uh, go in yesterday and get... Um, uh, be put under to get his teeth cleaned and everything and I was kind of freaked out about it. He's 12 years old so I kind of thought, you know, I was thinking about it all day long. Yeah. I thought, you know, he could have a seizure or who knows what, you know. And um, and they do caution you on all that stuff. But anyway, everything went fine and when Kelly got, and they also did a blood panel and everything to check like his liver function and kidneys and all these other vital organs. He's 12 years old. Um, when, when he got, Kelly brought him back, she said that the doctor said, Kelly, I have two-year-old dogs 
that don't have vital signs wow. as good as this guy. Nice. Wow. His blood work was so stellar they couldn't believe it. Wow. Great. <laughs> oh, so that's a good story. Good. Thank you. Jim. What's he eating? <laughs> you get the right food. What's he eating? Oh, Kelly's tried a lot of different things. She's got, I mean, we really make an effort. He doesn't yeah. eat any crap. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, right. And there's a lot of it out there. She's got him mostly on a raw diet now, different mm -hmm. kinds, kinds of raw stuff, and then obviously the neek and water, and, uh, and all, all the treats he has are like yeah. all natural, you yeah. know, like these dried fish cod sticks instead of yeah. raw hides and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, you know, maybe it all makes a difference. I mean, I we haven't done it his whole too. life. We've done it about, we didn't start until he was about five, but can't hurt, I guess. No, it does make a difference. And if, if you're in an hour class, you actually go through uh, toys that are good for a dog, treats that are good for a dog, and you really do stay away from the things that really aren't healthy. Uh, rawhide, one of the worst. Cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why? It just actually, because it can get into their intestines and stay there. Not every dog can digest as well as others. Okay. So, um, and the, the thought of giving your dog a bone and walking away, not mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, no matter what you give them, you should supervise the dog. So it's just like a kid; you wouldn't give a kid a bone and walk away. So things happen. Um, dogs have actually gotten bones lodged in their their mouth. Oh. Mm -hmm. They can't get it out. Stuck. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what's this class that tells them? The class teaches that just yeah. own, it's just owners to just. Yeah, I teach, uh, care for I teach owners or, pe or people in pet services. And so when is the class? I'm going to be teaching at Incline uh, Pet Station. Uh, we're work I'm working out a schedule with uh, Marshall right now. Okay, so, so you don't have a uh, date yet? Not yet, but I do, I do have a date for the four-hour course, and that's going to be the, well, the 17th or 18th. We're trying to decide which day is going to work best for everybody. Keep us posted on that. Yeah, yeah, so the hour classes, um, I'll probably do two classes a month. Uh, there'll be a Saturday or Sunday. Uh, the cost of the class is $25, and a portion of that goes back to work or dog day in the park. Yeah, cool. so, awesome. So, yeah. I'd love to take my girls to that. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, Linda, is that primarily who we would, re we would refer to you? Is it primarily classes? Yeah. Your dog, your, your card says also first aid and care for pets. I mean, yeah. who do we refer to you? Um, what, what are good referrals that, for you? Anybody that wants to know more about their pet and the wellness of the pet. Um, I also do play groups. Uh, we're starting some play groups here in Incline. So you know, people that have energetic dogs that really need to, to run, um, we'll be looking at that. So play groups usually run about $30. Um, and they it's usually um, a one to two hour hike for the energetic dogs. And we also do walks for, for little dogs, you know, dogs that can't maybe go on the hike. But, um, so I'm looking for people that, that don't have the time to exercise their dog or they want to know more about the dog. So. Thank you, Linda. Sure. Good job. Yeah. Good job.